What is up everybody? Got another video here for you and once again this is another delayed one. I've had this knife for a little while now. Um, I think I got this the end of April of this year 2014. This is the Medford Knife and Tool Viper. And uh, this was first announced back in May of last year. Uh, Greg had done a video on it showing the first one and it was his first uh, real flipper. He had one other knife, I think it was a TFF3 or 4 maybe, that had kind of a, a tab on it, but it wasn't really meant to be a flipper. But this was his first flipper design. I called him literally the day that he came out with it and placed my order for it and um, received it, like I said, back in uh, in April. Uh, you know, before I flip it open, which I know you're all waiting for, I'll show you once again the great packaging that Medford does. Uh, this nice custom Pelican case, dog tag with uh, Greg's info on it, the office's info, and then inside, um, this is all the knife care instructions, which are very specific. Please read these, because uh, the Medford Knife and Tool Company is very serious about how you handle and deal with their knives, which is pretty much use the knives, and if the knife needs anything done to it, they want you to send it back to them. Uh, here, is the knife certificate. You can see the birth date and Greg's signature and all the info about it. So, very nice packaging as always from Medford. I'm sure anyone that's watching this video and has seen their stuff before, you guys are aware of that. So we'll get this out of the way. And we'll get to the knife. Let me just pop it open for you. Look at that. This is a beast of a knife. I'll give you a little background story, as I always do usually, um, in regards to how the process went with this. But you can see um, pretty, pretty crazy stuff on this one. So, originally, when I ordered this knife, back on, I believe, May 24th or 27th, one of those days last year, 2013, um, I, you have to pay for your knives up front. That's how Medford does his stuff. He makes you pay up front for it. Um, so just be aware of that when you contact him. So I did that. I put in what I wanted, uh, bronzed on this side, flamed on this side. And then at that time, a few videos before that, he had shown some knives that he had done some writing on. And I thought that it looked really cool. And I didn't have a blade with any kind of writing on it. And I know that Medford is all about America, USA made stuff, all that. And obviously I love the country that we live in, in the United States of America. Very happy to be here, uh, proud of our country and all that uh, has been accomplished here in being a citizen. So because it's such a company that represents that and Greg's all about that, obviously being in the military himself, I thought that it would be cool to get something USA styled on the blade. So as you can see here, uh, it says in kind of a very constitutional looking like writing, E Pluribus Unum which if any of you have looked at our money, uh, the dollar bill, uh, you will see that on all our currency. And it is uh, Latin, I believe, it should be. And it stands for out of many, one. Uh, more uh, distinctly, out of many comes one. So obviously, uh, from many different types of people, we have one nation. I thought that was really cool. And obviously seeing what the blade design was when he showed it, I thought it would look nice on the flats there. Uh, before we get into everything else about this knife, I'm wearing gloves just because there's a lot of anodizing on here and with the knives that have a lot of anodization, I like to wear gloves because it really does, um, when I'm doing a long video and handling it a lot, the finger oils do kind of change it, the colors and maybe if I was holding it here before I showed you the other side you wouldn't see really how crazy those colors pop. Um, and any of you that don't realize that when you do hold the anodized knives, either electro anodized or flame anodized, the oils from your hands do affect the coloring, sometimes in a cool way, sometimes in a not so cool way. But what you do to get rid of that is you just take a little uh, Windex or a glass cleaner, wipe the titanium down, it'll bring all the luster and colors back, and then wipe it down again with another rag to kind of get the excess uh, Windex or glass cleaner off, and that'll make it pop for you. So, whoop. A little slippery with the gloves there. Put that here. And then just to show, this is the email from uh, Medford Knife and Tool that I received when I placed my order with the uh, lead time. And I'll pull that up here. So, current lead time, 16 to 24 weeks is the current lead time. Obviously subject to change. Um, every time we made to make your knife impossible, thank you. And there's the Medford info. And then just to show you that this is from that time period. Uh, 
sorry for the delay guys uh, there's the date May 24th hey Nick that's the info so just to once again I always like to have backup and show that everything I'm trying to say is as accurate as possible now obviously 16 to 24 weeks so let's say it's May 24th so let's say four weeks to July four weeks to August four weeks to so that's eight weeks four weeks to September that's uh, 12 weeks and then four weeks to October is 16 weeks end of October so May to June June to July July to August August September four times four is 16 October is another four so that's 20 so November so November second week of November would have been um, the longest date the 24th week and then September would have been the 16th week and I got this week that got this knife this past April of 2014 so it it took about 44 weeks uh, which once again if you guys have ordered from Medford or know anything not uncommon that it's delayed but obviously it has a significant delay here's the thing uh, and if you watched maybe some other videos I put up I talked about things as well communication um, Amy Medford who at this time period was doing most of the uh, front office work and communication work. She did call me several times to give me updates to let me know the knife was delayed. Um, did I call there too? Yes. And if you watch Terra Fanatic's video, he'll kind of address some of this to an extent as he got a Viper from them as well and ordered a few weeks after me. Uh, and look, things happen. They're, they went through a lot of changes last year. They changed their facilities. They added on more people. They were doing stuff for other shows. So there was a lot going on and a lot that went into the delay. And obviously this was a new piece for them, so they had to work out kinks. It still is obviously frustrating that you think 24 weeks is your time period to get something and it ends up being uh, close to double that, um, you know, almost a full year before you get the knife. But the knife itself is a pretty spectacular piece of work uh, with one simple issue. So... The knife came out exactly how I wanted it, uh, the bronze side, uh, flame side, you never know exactly how the flame treatment is going to come out. This is actually, I've never seen this, usually it's kind of, it looks like flames, but this is almost just a, a really awesome uh, array of colors, especially on this new uh, 3D milled clip that they did, uh, that's kind of almost a polished look to it, even though the rest of this is more of maybe a blasted look. And we'll, we'll bring in some close-ups here. Sometimes with the gloves it doesn't want to do it. So polished hardware, uh, polished pivot uh, face, and then uh, the Medford knife and tool insignia, and that S, which might look a little different to you guys because I'm sure you're used to seeing a D there. Um, obviously the nice uh, grind here on the blade uh, comes to a nice sharp tip and it is a nice sharp blade. Super thick. This is a 0 0.260, I want to say, blade steel. Extremely thick. Um, nice and kind of satin finish here. And then this is a, a kind of satin stone wash, if you really look at it. This isn't full satin. You know, it, it is stone washed. Um, but it's a really neat finish. I like a lot. Uh, you can see the front choil there. And then obviously on this side, you can see the nice, uh, you know, very tight edge on there a little bit of a mirrorness to it uh, once again the nice pivot there and then you can see that crazy coloring on there and this really interesting lock bar cut it looks so tiny compared to the rest of the knife maybe a little off on the on the ratio as far as how it appears but it seems to work very well um, and then you can see flow through design all the way through the nice cutouts on the pivots or I'm, I'm sorry on the standoff and the other neat thing about this knife is for how huge it is you really only have two connection points here at the at the pivot head area and then here at the tail and even with you know where the pocket clip is sitting right there just totally open flow through design very thick I think it's 0 .190 thick titanium in there um, nothing really milled out at all you can see it's a solid piece on the front and then just the lock bar work on the knife itself um, you can see in the hand uh, you know how much of that butt end and I have extra large size hands these are extra large gloves I'm wearing right now um, you know how much is sticking out let me see if I can pull this up a little bit just so you can get the whole picture here well gloves kind of caught on the shirt so there and then with it choked up 
really how much uh, de you know, dexterity, um, feel of the knife you can have, and then how intricate you can make your cuts really if you wanted to work on something. Um, and then just how thick that blade is. I mean, that's just a beast of a blade. Now, uh, Medford only does washer systems. He doesn't believe in the bearings, the roller bearings of any kind, because he thinks that uh, the less moving parts, the better. And also, uh, for he doesn't think that uh, for if this was going to be tactical use or taken out into different environments, washers are the best because he doesn't think anything will get inside them or or mess them up as much as uh, a bearing would. Now that's your own. You know, if you're a knife maker, you go with your own theory and what you do and that's what they do, that's what they stick to. Will he ever use bearings? Maybe at some point, possibly, but I don't really foresee it in the near future. Um, that's kind of his uh, philosophy on knife making, and there are others. I believe Neil Blackwood is the same. He doesn't believe in using bearings. And this knife does flip very nice for being on washers. Now here's the difference from washers to bearings in my opinion. You can see when I release the lock bar, it will drop. Or maybe it won't. Let's see here. Yep, there we go. So it will drop, but then you see it doesn't just fall. It is, it will go in, and it's a super strong, not super strong, it's a strong detent. It's not a ridiculously strong, it's just, it's a strong solid detent. And you can see perfectly centered up, as Greg is a stickler for. Um, but it doesn't have that just, um, you know, falling down motion. But here's the thing it's just, very smooth all the way through. You can see I feel a little bit of you know tension and pressure both when I pull it open and when I close it. But there's no jumps or bumps or anything like that. You know, just nice and nice and easy. And then I'll show you this detent on here. Come on, focus. I mean, that's, that's a nice detent. We'll just pop this open a little bit. Do it one more time. You hear that? You can see the design through the back. So, I know I kind of got off on the tangent of getting back to knife, but once again, uh, Amy and uh, Greg, both of them, I talked to Greg maybe twice. I talked to Amy most of the time, both through email and phone. Obviously, she updated me why things were delayed. One, because of the warehouse move. Two, because this was a new knife. And when they had gotten the first few done, which I expected mine to really be one of the first ones since I literally ordered it within 24 hours of it coming out. But I did have some, obviously, additional custom ideas to it. And maybe they had started, they had already figured a few they were going to put into the line uh, or the, the group system before even announcing it to the public, that there were some want, things that they wanted to tweak or change on it. So... That pushed it back probably an average of at least four weeks or eight weeks just because of that. The second thing is the NP3 process. So if you guys look way back in my videos, you'll see that I had a Praetorian tie with D2 steel with the NP3 coating, which really was awesome. I love that knife. It's just that because I was changing my collection over and really wanted to only focus on flippers, um, I had to let it go. And I kind of expected that anyways when I first got it. It's a re it really was a, a keynote piece for the Medford group, that Praetorian tie. But I knew it was just going to sit on the shelf. I probably wasn't even going to open and close it that much, you know, take it out and just hold it or, or fondle it. It was just sitting in there, uh, mainly because what I like to do is, you know, flip the knives. So the MP3 process, for some reason, the company that they had do that changed their recipe or their process on it so that what happened was when they were getting NP3 coated blades, which is originally what I ordered for this to be too, because I loved how it was on my Praetorian tie, the new recipe or process, once it was put on here, uh, there was an issue with how the coating reacted against the detent ball. So the detent ball in there, if you guys can see, geez, I can't even see it. Yeah, right back there. Where is it? Oh, it's way in the way in the back there. Um, the detent ball, when riding against, and I don't know if you can see the the line on here or not. See, there's the hole. 
No, you can't really see it on here. Um, wasn't reacting well. It was scraping or uh, skidding and wasn't doing a, a nice job of working with the steel, you know, steel the ball, the ball bearing, or the ball detent ball, and and the blade. So they had to actually stop doing NP3 coatings on folders. They still do it on fixed blades because obviously there's nothing rubbing against there. But for some reason, it totally messed up the action of the knife. So that was, you know, Amy had to call me on that and say, hey, look, we can't do your NP3 anymore. And the reason I got that, for two reasons. I really liked how it looked, and it was great on the Praetorian tie head. And then two, because it's D2 steel, that coating prevents rust. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's obviously um, where the edge of the knife is isn't coated anyway, so rust can still get in either way. But for the most part, co this coating was meant to prevent rust. So the only other options they had was, you know, stone washing, they had just started doing stone washing, um, obviously having it raw, be a raw just satin finish D2, uh, or do their oxidizing, uh, their black oxide, or do a Vulcan blade, which is that special kind of rainbow or different colored finish on the blade by doing a special kind of heat treat on it. I didn't really want any of those because I wanted the rust proof, so I kind of reiterated that to Amy, and they offered to put, that's what this S is, an S35 VN blade. Now they've done a few of these blades in the past on short runs and they said it's usually a hundred dollar additional fee but because the MP3 didn't work out they were gonna waive that. So thank you for waiving the fee I appreciate that but once again the knife was you know delayed by 20 weeks and so I think that was definitely worth the incentive but that's good customer service right there you know they we can't do the mp3 for you it's delaying everything now they were trying to finish all the blades that they could do that didn't have the mp3 and kind of put those to the back to this side or hear back from the customers what they wanted to do so i got the s35 vn blade for the price of a regular d2 blade i got the uh, cool custom writing on here and then the finish on this is a satin stone wash so you have it looks like a satin flat on the top and kind of you can see the grind satin lines on the blade, but it is stone washed. If you look at, like I've mentioned in the past, Terra Fanatics video, you'll see the slight difference. This is a beast of a knife. It's a tank. It's heavy duty. Um, definitely weighs a lot. Uh, it fits in the pocket. There's just about this much showing, but it is a beast and I'll show you as a comparison to another knife. But this blade is just ridiculous. So let me pull out something else here. So here is a Browse Blades Reloader, and you can see butt to butt on here, a little bit shortness there, and then the blade, and you can see the size difference, and now here's where you really see the thickness difference. The Browse Blades are pretty thick as they are, but you can see how much thicker that Medford blade is on there and even the difference with G10 and titanium liners and this just being straight titanium frames the difference there so it was delayed um, they did always keep in touch the communication was excellent and I did eventually obviously get the knife and I got the upgrade to the S35 VN steel so thank you for that Amy thank you for the communication Greg thanks for doing a nice job on this knife the only um, main things with this knife, and you guys can watch Wieners and Steel stuff and see what they think about, they thought this edge here was a little sharp. For me, I don't know. I didn't. I don't think it's that bad. Um, everything else on the knife is well rounded, but so maybe this is the roughest part where this is. And if I took gloves off, maybe I could catch it a little bit better. But really, that didn't bug me. The lockup you can see is ridiculously early, but early. Sorry. But the biggest issue is lock stick on here. This thing had a ton of lock stick when it when I got it. I mean, to the point where I could not open it with my thumb like that. And the other thing is, I, Greg doesn't like the thumb opening anyways. He likes the, the claw routine, which even with lock stick, the claw does work pretty well. You put your finger in here, pop it out, you know, and just close it. And obviously, because it's not on those bearings, it doesn't slide as fast down on your finger and you have that little choil and the, the tang there to stop it. So the, the claw is probably the best, but my Praetorian tie that I had had zero lock stick. It was very easy to open and disengage. So just something to be aware of. You can see it's not that bad right now, and that's because I did, I called up 
the office because I said, you know, I didn't want to do anything myself. I wanted to follow exactly what um, Medford recommends when there's lock stick. So one, they said, open and close the knife a lot. Even with the lock stick, you know, pop it open and closed, get it working, get this, the steel and the titanium to meld and all that. Secondly, uh, put graphite on the top of the tang or the, the, the part here. So, and do it a lot. Put a ton of graphite on, open and close it a bunch, wipe it off, open and close it. Put a bunch of graphite back on, open and close it, same thing. Um, and then the other option was to put um, Sharpie on here too. Um, but I mainly stuck with just the graphite like they had first recommended. And you can see now, I can pop it out. But what's going to happen, the weird thing is, after a while of me flipping, it's, if I flip this close and open a bunch of times in a row, the lock stick comes back. If I open and close it a couple times, put it away, pick it up a day or two later, it doesn't happen. So really, for how often you use a knife, if you do whatever that work was that I talked about um, and the lock stick's gone, you put this down and you are going to carry this. I don't. This, once again, is more of a collector's piece to me. I've admitted I'm more of a collector. I really only carry my less, lesser expensive knives. But if you were a person that was going to carry this, for the amount of times in a day that you actually would have to open and close your knife, maybe three or four, honestly, if you're if you're honest with yourself, unless you're a person that just has to cut stuff all the time, it's you're probably not going to have the lock stick pop up for you. But if you are sitting at home just opening and closing your knife, see right now, the lock stick just happened. And I didn't I didn't throw that open super hard or not, but you can see right now, I just that's that's it. So that's the only oh, there it is, see? It just hit that point, 20 minutes of flipping it open and now it's starting to lock stick. Um, but you can, you can do that two different ways if that does happen to you. Um, you know, do the claw method, pop your finger in there and you don't really see it as much. Or just put it down for a little bit, wait, or put the graphite or, or Sharpie on there and it's good to go. But besides the lock stick, and like you saw, for about 20 minutes it didn't happen and then it finally happened at the end. It's a solid, big industrial piece. Is it for everybody? No. Is it probably for collectors? Yes. Um, this would be a heavy, bulky piece to carry tactically, i got to be honest with you. Um, even if it's on your gear, it's probably over a pound as far as weight goes. Um, but a neat piece. A neat look to it. Uh, I really like how it looks closed. I don't really care about having this big tang. It, you know, it kind of looks like a gun trigger. Um, it's different, you know, so it, it stands out. And this one obviously has some customizations with the S35 VM blade, the E Pluribus Unum nicely on there. And I love how Greg's symbol here kind of has that bronze look that almost matches the bronze scale on here. So that's my info on it. That's my thoughts. Um, as you can see, it does, uh, you know, it is smooth. Um, pretty much the trick is to get your finger tab right there and just push kind of straight down and it'll pop open for you. Um, I like using my middle finger too on there because it, it's almost like it's a snap. You know, it's more of a snap motion than I can get with this finger, so you'll see a little bit difference here. But that's it. Let me know what you guys think, uh, questions, thoughts, and if I didn't cover anything else you wanted to see on here, sorry. Uh, I'll leave it here. Oh, sorry, quick. Cut test, show you the sharpness. So, it's sharp, cuts paper, cool. Peace.